Hey everybody, so how are we doing today? So here we go, we got some news on Muhammad Ben Salmon. Yeah, I, I call him that on purpose, I think it's hilarious. Anyway, Muhammad Ben Salmon, uh, <clears throat> who was the current leader of, um, hold on, hmm. Saudi Arabia. We're claiming now that Iran is a threat to Middle Eastern stability, both economically and in terms of safety. <clears throat> of course, they're Shiites and they're Sunnis. Those are two denominations of Islam that hate each other quite a bit. But uh, of course, Tehran denies any involvement in recent attacks involving what they claim are clearly Iranian mines. And these mines caused severe damage to some oil tankers, which was also uh, directly connected to attacks on some fracking stations owned by the Sauds. He is quoted as saying, <clears throat> The kingdom is keen to preserve the stability and security of the region, to spread out the scourge of war, and to realize peace and stability. Tensions have risen between the United States and Iran after Washington quit a multinational nuclear deal with Iran, reimposed sanctions, and boosted its military presence in the Gulf. Uh, Bolton has said that Iranian mines were almost certainly, oh, there's that word again, used in the tanker attacks, which he described as being connected to the strike on pumping stations on the kingdom's east-west pipeline and a rock attack on Baghdad's green zone. Okay, the attack in the Baghdad green zone no one ever actually successfully managed to identify who was actually behind it. And almost certainly, that phrase lately has had a very strong connection to uh, some very dirty, filthy liars of late. People who were caught lying, and they all happen to say almost certainly. Apparently, that's the new evidence these days. An Iranian official dismissed Bolton's remark as a ludicrous claim. The Islamic Republic has said it would defend itself against any military economic aggression. Iranian Vice President Ishak Jongiri said on Tuesday the country was not allowed to pursue the development of nuclear weapons as it was banned by Supreme Leader Ayatollah al Khamenei, Iran's highest authority. Uh, Muhammad ben Salman also basically said, It must be said that the absence of severe and firm stance towards the subversive actions of the Iranian regime in the region caused it to go too far, as we see today. The lack of a firm stance, huh? Define firm stance. You mean the lack of military harassment? Is that what caused it? No, 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 my friend. The presence of military harassment is going to cause war. I guarantee I guarantee you. But they go on to say, under the heading Deterring Iran, that Bolton and the U.S. Special Envoy for Iran, Brian Hook, told reporters on Thursday that a re repositioning of U.S. military assets in the region had succeeded in deterring Iran. Bolton speaking in London said it would be a big mistake if Iran or its surrogates in the region attacked U.S. interests. Hook told a news conference call that the United States would respond with military force if that happens. Overwhelming force! If you remember what Trump had to say on that. <clears throat> Last week, the Pentagon announced the deployment of 900 additional troops to the Middle East and extended the stay of another 600 service members after speeding up deployment of an aircraft carrier strike group and sending bombers and additional Patriot missiles. Now, for those of you who are not very good with math, that's about 1,200 troops that should be here, home not over there in the Middle East causing trouble. <clears throat> but who's going to listen to me, right? The United States and the UAE, which hosts a U.S. air base on Wednesday, activated a defense corporation agreement signed earlier this year. Yeah, they activated the agreement. They activated. Such an edgy word, activate. Gulf, sta Gulf states have a joint defense force under the Gulf Corporate Co Cooperation Council, or GCC. But the alliance has been fractured by a boycott imposed by Qatar, by Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Behran, and non-GCC Egypt since mid-2017. Man, it seems like none of these Arab-Muslim countries can get along with each other. 
They're always bickering and bitching about something, it seems like. Qatari Premier Abdullah bin Nasar Al-Tani, whose country hosts the largest military base in the region, attended the Gulf meeting. The most senior Qatari official to visit the kingdom since the embargo. Iraq and Oman, which have good ties with Tehran and Washington, have said they are working to reduce tensions. Doha, which shares a giant gas field with Iran, has offered to help. Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif has said that Tehran wanted balanced ties with Gulf neighbors and proposed signing a non-aggression pact with them. Now, I'd like a statement for all you people who probably think that, that uh, Tehran is in any way involved. You probably say, uh, oh, the guilty always say they're innocent. To which I ask you this. So, does that mean everyone who's innocent is going to say they're guilty? Or are they going to straightforwardly say that they're innocent? Hmm? Yeah, that's what I thought. Think about it this way. Want to really know whether or not it's true someone's innocent? Just ask them this question. What do you think we should do to the guilty party? What should their punishment be? You ask them that. If they have difficulty speaking right away and have no immediate commentary to that question, that's because you're literally asking them, uh, asking them a self-harm question, which they would hesitate to answer unless they were suicidal. If they are truly innocent, then they should respond fairly quickly and usually with something quite reasonable. So maybe we should ask Tehran that question. What do you think we should do if we do find the responsible party for hitting those tankers and attacking those oil platforms? Suddenly I get the urge to play Warcraft 2. <laughs> uh, if they sponsor, if they respond right away, then that should be a pretty solid indication that they are in fact innocent. Mind you, in the end, I suppose it doesn't really matter because Iran is a Shiite nation, and the Saudi Arabia are Sunnis, and they, uh, and those two denominations of Islam, basically hate each other, and Islam it has a direct impact on political decisions over there the conflict between the two is inevitable. I'm really not surprised by Muhammad Ben Salman's move to uh, verbally berate and attack Iran. It would suit his agenda now, wouldn't it? Needless to say, I really don't think that uh, Iran actually has any nuclear devices, and this is a false flag for war. Just like Iraq, just like every other Middle Eastern proxy war we've ever fought. It's the same old bullshit, Michael Bolton's the one fueling it, and probably misinforming Trump on everything, and getting his uh, approval behind it. Anyway...